Good morning. I have had two busy days. This is Monday morning. It's probably about 6.30. I was so busy Saturday and Sunday. And then I got Sebastian on top of it yesterday. And I'm going to tell you, my hind end is dragging. I figure it's going to be pulling up in the next video or so. <laughs> I am dog tired. I went to bed last night at 9 o'clock. I was sitting over there. And we were watching TV, and I got Sebastian in the bed, and I got my legs propped up. And I told David, I said, you can lay there and watch TV as long as you want, but I'm going to turn this light off and put my mask on, CPAP. And I did, and I went to sleep, and I got about four and a half hours, which is good for me. Then I got up and cleaned the kitchen and watched some YouTube videos. I love having YouTube videos on when I'm in the kitchen. That is like my middle of the night routine after i've slept and i get up it might be 1 30 it might be 2 33 whatever i like it when i have saved a video or two to prop up in there and watch while i'm doing my kitchen which um I, i'll stop and go over and lean on the counter and <laughs> do all that so i get more leaning and looking than i do anything but that is like my routine i look forward to that i look forward to that as much as i look forward to getting in my car and blasting my music I don't, that's just, I don't know, but I just do. So, I kind of upset myself when I watch them all, and I didn't save one for the night. So, it was funny, yesterday, I had run the dishwasher after a marathon cooking for two days, and I told David, I said, no, those are clean, don't touch them. I said, I need something to do to watch my videos, and he just laughed. I'm like, what can I say? But... Did I tell you Sebastian's in the bed? I don't remember. I get on here and start talking and I can't remember what I say. But he's usually up at 6. And it's like 6.30 so I hurried up like about 5.30 and got my shower. I hurried and get in and out because you know last time I walked in the bedroom and left him alone. He colored on my chair. So like, last night he, he was eating something. It was before bed. And where I sit in my chair, I have the Kindle propped up against my little side table, and he just lays right there beside me and watches this TV. Well, he was eating, and he needed more milk, so he's got this little cup that I found him. That's his milk cup. I poured it, put it on the table, sat down. He got past me with that cup, and I did not know that he had been sitting down there with that cup. So he had been down there watching TV, and we were talking and carrying on, and, and he goes, stood up, and he goes, oh no, I need a napkin. I said, what? He goes, I need a napkin. <laughs> he was kind of, you know, I'm like, why? And he looked down. He had been sitting there giving his cars, car washes and his milk, and he had it spilled all over my carpet. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? I said, I think it's bedtime. He didn't give me no argument. He just trotted it right on in there to the bed. Now, his daddy, he gives him a fit and a half. He don't do the things with me that he does with his daddy. And I, I told him, I said, well, he don't like to fly squat. I said, you don't even have to hit him. You don't have to pop him or nothing. He just knows he's going to get it if he don't listen. So I had an extra one. I gave it RJ last time. And uh, he he called me we were on, on the phone. He goes, it ain't the fly swat, it's you. He said, because fly swat don't do nothing in my house. <laughs> I got it yesterday. He started to pull a little bit of something on me. And I said, oh, no, no, uh-uh, no. And he started doing this little pouting, stubborn kind of thing. I'm like, you better get on that couch because he's got the corner of the couch. That's his timeout spot. He was just standing there defying me. I grabbed that fly swat, and when he seen me get it, he took off flying like a scalded dog. He couldn't get on that couch fast enough. So, it, it works at my house. Oh, anyway. Bless his heart. He's just, he's something. He's just something. But what I pray up, now there's two things I got to tell you. I can't hardly remember what all I said in my little wrap up where I was showing you what I made you know for the week hold on but two things I just mm -mm. in the video 
the breakfast casserole muffins. I said it was good. So the first one was good. The second one was, um, because I tried to eat one this morning. I was like 3.30 starving to death. I'm like, well, I'll go ahead and eat my breakfast casserole. And then later on, I'll eat something else. I couldn't. I took one bite and I just couldn't. Somehow the biscuit part of it, it just, it got mushy or something. So it does not translate from the biscuit breakfast casserole, which is good and works, to a jumbo muffin. So I just scratched that. I'm not even going to um, show you how I did that at all. Because even with the tweaks, I knew I had to make a tweak because it was filling up too full. But I'm not even going to tweak it and try again because I don't want to, um, I'll just keep it in the casserole in the dish. And then the other thing, which I was so disappointed, was the Pound Droppers um, pumpkin cheesecake. I don't like it. I I liked last week's with the chocolate and the coffee, the chocolate mocha. I did. I, I even said, you know, it needs more chocolate, it needs more coffee, but I liked it. Holly liked it. David, not so much. He don't come out and say, I got something in my eyeball. He don't come out and say, ooh, I don't like that. I think I've told you before, when he pushes something like to the side of his plate, he don't eat it, then I know he didn't care for it. But he won't, he, he's very respectful. Normally he likes everything I cook him, but I can tell when he don't. Well, he was leaving whatever day it was, I think maybe go mow or something at his mama's. I said, hey, hey, are you gonna eat your um, cheesecake? He goes, no, you can have it. Because it was his part that was left. I said, you sure? He goes, yeah, you can have it. So I knew right there and then he didn't care for it. Otherwise, he said, yeah, I'll eat when I get back. So he didn't care for it. Holly did and I did. But the pumpkin, I don't I don't know why. Now, I, I was telling you in the video, I made it in my pie plate. She says if you don't have a spring form pan to make it in a 9-inch pie plate, which that's what I made in. It was very thick and it didn't come out, you know, in like one piece. And... I, I was saying I'm going to try it in my square, which I am, because I'm going to try another flavor. I mean, one out of two, I might find another one I like. But I'm going to try it in my 9-inch square dish so that I can just cut them in squares and scoop that out easier. Because it really was too thin in that 10-inch spring form. But I don't know, this one, it was just very, very yogurty to the point of just too yogurty for me. That's why I didn't like the plain one, and that's why I never did try another one until the chocolate. So if I had tried this one first, I wouldn't have made any more. That's why I'm going to give another one another shot. Probably the Funfetti, because that's the one everybody likes. So I'll probably try that one next weekend. And then those two things were the only two things that Mm -mm, I didn't care for so those are not options for the week um, the rest deviled eggs I made for snack to go with my lunch or whatever I have a nice lunch plate David he's on the video he, he was sitting over there he'd come in from mowing and he was just sitting there taking a breather and getting him something to drink while I was filming that he's like well that'd be good for supper or something like that I'm like <laughs> back off <laughs> he gonna try to commandeer my lunch <laughs> you know I'd share with him I, I'd share with him but I made the meatballs I got a video for that added on coming up next and um, my pita chips and those muffins well sweet biscuits cause they're just not a muffin they are they are like a sweet biscuit and then uh, I cut up a watermelon that turned out to be good and sweet. I've kind of been hit or miss. It's not deep in the um, garden season yet. So I'm hoping they'll start getting better. And I think that's all I made. Um, I think that was it. And that's pretty much all I was going to come on here and tell you. Uh, that little bit. Oh yeah, I am working on um, more crafts. You remember a couple
couple weeks ago I made that DIY stain with the uh, steel wool. Well, I said then, I said, oh, I want to try other stuff. So if you saw my Dollar Tree haul, you saw those um, little wood crafts. Listen, the Dollar Tree is a good place to get something. And if it messes up, you're out of buck and some time. So I wanted to try other household like foods is a lot of whatever it is so i have like five or six little containers in there of different foods and vinegar to see what kind of stain i can get so i'm gonna wait till sebastian goes home if they've been soaking this will be day two i want to give them a good chance to get all the color out and i'm putting together a video for that. okay that's all i'm gonna say i'm gonna head on in the house and uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay, so let's get started on our meatballs. The first thing I have is, it's a two pound and a quarter, two and a quarter pound pack of hamburger, but I weighed it and it's only 35 ounces. So it's a two pound recipe, but this is a little over two pounds. So I, I beat, I be sure, <laughs> I be sure to put it in the tracker as 35 ounces. Now, if you notice it's in a bag, I'm going to start by saying this. If you've watched me any length of time, you know I do not like to touch raw meat. Pork, for some reason, don't bother me. Raw chicken, I can't stand it. And hamburger, forget it. It's not the fact that it's raw meat. I mean, my first husband was a deer hunter and squirrel hunter. And we killed and ate anything and everything. And so, raw meat don't bother me. It's the way it feels on my hand. I can't stand the fat the way it, because I have very funny hands. I can't use, but just certain hand lotions, because they make, they just, they're like fingers on a chalkboard. Everybody has their thing. Now, That's what I'm saying. What I'm going to do is add, this is probably, this is what I had left in the refrigerator in my little onion bowl, and I just went ahead and minced it the rest of the way with my pampered chef. This was probably equal a half an onion, so anywhere from a half to a whole onion, how much ever you would like, but do mince it because you don't really want the um, big pieces of onion sticking out of the meatballs. This just makes for a nicer um, meatball. That's kind of hard going through there. Okay, hold on just a second. Now let me, I probably could use a little more, but I'm going to stick with that. This is how I like to make my meatloaf too. It's so easy. You just pop it in here and go to town. Now we're going to make our binder. I have two eggs that I've beaten. To that, I'm going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, I'm not um, putting anything like Italian, a teaspoon of onion powder, Italian seasoning, or any other, like, cuisine-based seasoning, because I don't know how we'll eat them. I know Monday, two teaspoons of dried parsley. Monday, we're having them with brown gravy, because that's what David wanted. Because I told him, I said, I'm making meatballs. How do you want them? And so tomorrow, that's what he's um, feeling like. But I can still season them, the sauce or whatever I put them in for meat, um, well, meatball subs or spaghetti or something like that. Hold on. Then two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Now you could double this if you want to and make it an even bigger batch, but this is good enough for the two of us. A little bit of pepper, and since I don't know, I was going to do half a teaspoon of salt. Since I don't know how I'm going to be using it, we won't try to overpower it with salt. And then, 
plain old dried bread crumb. Oh, I forgot to get my measuring cup. Hold on. I gotta move you back. I knew I was forgetting something, as usual. So a cup of those. Now the points on this, I'm not sure because I don't know how many I'm going to get. I'm thinking I'm going to get at least 60. And that will make them one point a piece. But you know what? I didn't scroll. I didn't scroll to see if it's more than one for one point. But you know, I'll have it on the screen. It'll be right in the recipe. Now I'm using 93% beef because I think any leaner in it, it is going to be too dry for my um, liking. But use any kind of beef for turkey. If you'd rather have turkey meatballs, um, do that too. Even chicken. You can probably do chicken meatballs. I don't see why not. So, I'm just going to put this in here. If you're doing it by hand, you just squish it in. Or if you're doing it with a spoon, just squish it in. However you like to do your meatloaf or meatballs, that's how you do it. Oh, that's, I was going to show you. I had this sitting out over here because, you know, um, I remember somebody wasn't even sure, didn't even realize they sold the food service plastic type gloves at the Dollar Tree, and that's where I get them. And then look at this. See that? 40 cents. I had found these back, oh, last year maybe, early this year. It's the food service. Little bags happen to be large, so that was good because I got big hands. Hundred, where does it say? Hundred. It was completely sealed. Taped, taped. This was completely sealed. Brand new. I found like, oh, a dozen. You know about every one of them because I normally get a hundred at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. So, 100 for 40 cents, I stocked up from now until I'm 80. <laughs> so, I just wanted to share my, my fun find for you. I use them for all kinds of stuff. Um, there's all kinds of things you do that you don't want to get your hands dirty. So, they're very handy to have in your kitchen. Now, let's just smush this together. I'm going to um, I'm gonna cut away and do it because it makes a lot of racket in the microphone. Okay, I got it smushed around, but there's um, so much in here, and the breadcrumb part wasn't real, real loose, so I was having a hard time getting it completely mixed. I'm going to finish it off in here. What I did was spray the inside of my bowl with cooking spray. It's just easier to wash that way. There's just a little, even if you're mixing it in your bowl, hit it with a little spray. It's just easier to wash the um, fat off. Let me just kind of smush it around a little bit more. All right, I think that's as good as I'm going to get it mixed. Now we're going to make our meatballs. I have the oven preheated to 400, and I've got my two baking pans. These are the 15 by 10s, and I'm hoping I can get um, everything. I, I think I can get it all on two sheets. What I'm going to do is scoop... Uh, that's a little bit one one scoops worth all my scoops at the same time and then I'll do all my rolling at the same time like I was stopping and starting to scoop and roll scoop and roll that's not very um, that's just too time consuming all right I got them all scooped out I didn't get 60 I got 46 I went ahead and took my camera down and went through the app and at 46 meatballs with 93% ground beef, they are a true one point a piece. All the way up from one to 46, one point a piece. So I think you can get a decent little serving for whatever you're gonna eat it in for low points. Now here comes the part I really do not like. I can't help it, I just don't. The gloves are loose and they 
the meat sticks to them. Even if you spray them, it will stick to it. So, I'm going to have to go in for the kill. <laughs> I'm going to cut my hands first. And then just bite the bullet. Oh, there. All right, they go in a 400 degree oven. 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to switch the racks at probably 7 minutes. And, you know, I'll let you know when they get through how long it took them. So, I'll see you back. Can you hear my fan in the background? It got hot in here. But you can see, being 93%, there wasn't a whole lot of that blurry. There we go. Wasn't a whole lot of fat that came out. Now, I did not cook these all the way done. Because I'm going to cook them further, either in gravy or... Um, spaghetti sauce and I'm going to have to thaw them out and heat them so they're going to cook some more and I don't want them to dry out so I did these for 20 minutes I did 7 minutes flip the rack 8 minutes flip the rack and 5 minutes and they're almost medium inside I check the temperature and so that's as far as I want to take them now if you want them all the way done obviously cook them longer and check them to make sure they are like you want them but to be heated up again, then I'm I'm going to under bake them. Now I would put them all in the freezer, except I'm using some of them for lunch prep this week. Some will be for supper tomorrow, and some for lunch prep. And then whatever I have left, I'll decide what size um, serving I should put it in. So I'm going to go set them up here and let them cool. And I this is the ones I counted out for my lunch. Let's see. These are four servings for tomorrow night. So I'm just going to put this in the fridge like it is. And then I had enough to do five little servings. So that would be two lunches for me. And I just marked on here. Make ahead meatballs. One point each. I'm just going to pop those in there. And stick that in the freezer. If I was not making lunch prep, like I said, I would have more of these for the freezer. Meal size... I'm single serving size, however you want to do it. Okay, the fan is still on, so forgive me. Now, I know you know how to steam food. You put it in a steamer and you put it over boiling water. But I was going to um, show you just a little tip. I didn't know. I saw somebody else do it, and I thought, okay, I should have known that years ago. You know how when you... Now, this is a bag I already bought, um, florets. Oh, I don't like that because it's just easier that way sometimes but they're still like that's just a little bit bigger than I want to eat normally you just go hacking at it hacking at it you got a thousand of these little green things watch this just cut down through the stem pull it apart you have two there was no little green things watch the magic again just cut through the stem Pull it apart. No green things. Ha! I just thought that was so clever. I wanted to share it. So I'm going to finish doing that with these. I have two squashes that his sister gave us. I'm going to slice them and just lay them around the top. And that is what I'm going to put in my lunch plates. One more little thing we need to cook before we put together our lunch plates. And that is the gravy. Now, I just have never showed you these. I don't cook with them that often. But having them on hand... It's still very handy. Oh, doesn't that go together good? <laughs> I mixed these up when I was mixing other stuff back at the beginning of the pandemic. And I've used my beef one time, and I haven't used my chicken yet. But it's um, just beef gravy mix. It's just like what you get in those little packets. And I'm chicken. I usually make it, my recipe is by the quart jar, but I have to at this time. Um... First of all, I'll start with a cup of water. My pot's getting hot. And then a half a cup of the gravy mix, and then we can talk. Um, what was I saying? I used to keep these all the time. But we don't eat gravy as much as we used to. Because y'all know David and his love affair with the gravy. He probably married if he could. Well... Sometimes you still want a little bit, like on my meatballs, and tomorrow night. And there's not going to be any meat drippings to make no real gravy. I feel like I'm cheating on gravy with this. This is like 
Grady's dumb little cousin. <laughs> but he's still welcome at family get-togethers. <laughs> All we got to do is mix a cup of water and a half a cup of that. And since this is beef, add you a little spoonful of kitchen bouquet. It's nothing but brown and sauce, brown and liquid. That's all. Just makes it more appetizing looking. Will not flavor it for you. See, doesn't that look more beefy already? Oh, yeah. So we just need to cook that until it thickens. And I'm going to let it do that. I'm going to show you how quick it is. Um, if my calculations are right, I went back, because they see my recipe builder, and it comes up to one... Two points for this whole pot. And this pot makes four servings. It's a quarter cup serving, which is plenty for rice or whatever. Obviously, you can eat more. But two points and four servings is the same principle as that cheesecake I made last week. Four points for the whole recipe, but the app pointed it out to where if you ate it all, it was going to be eight points. And I just don't go for that. So... You put this through and it gives you one point per serving. Well, then that makes it a four-point pot of gravy. But it's only a two-point pot of gravy. So, my half point, I am not going to round. I'm just not going to. You you can do as you see fit. But as for me and my meatballs, we shall not round. <laughs> All right. You see how quick and easy that gravy come together? Look at that. Now, don't expect no home-style, um, standing at the stove, cooking all day kind of gravy. Because it's just like if you pour it out of a packet with water. It is the exact same principle. Powdered milk, um, bouillon, some spices, uh, cornstarch or flour. I think it's cornstarch. I can't remember. I'll put the recipe on my website if you're interested. You may not be. So, well, that's all. Now we're going to go over to the other side of the room. My rice is done. And we'll put together these lunch plates. Put this together. I have my vegetables here in the back. My squash. And underneath is my broccoli. I have my rice. And I don't have a very big area here to put all my pots and things on. So we'll... Can you see my gravy way down in here somewhere? We'll just do the best we can. And I'm only going to do three. Because I, I might want something them other days. Uh, I pigeonhole myself sometimes. I, pi I pigeonhole. Um, and I don't don't leave myself room for other things that might pop up that I think I want to try. So that's what I'm going to stick with just three. So I want to do a half a cup of rice. And you can weigh it. I'm just not, I'm just not going to bother with it. This is, I want you to watch. I think I showed it <laughs> on something the other day. I'm not sure. But look at that rice. You see how fluffy and beautiful that is? That is parboiled rice. Never knew it existed till it's the only thing I could get during the pandemic. I made it the other day because I finally ran out of my white rice. And lo and behold, that's like the best rice I have ever made. So I think parboiled all the way. I, I do not salt it when I cook it, so I just need to add a little bit now. And then each plate gets five meatballs. So the rice is three points for half a cup. The meatballs are one point a piece. So that is eight points. And I told you I'm not counting a point for the gravy. So this might be a big size lunch if you don't get very many points. But even still, you could fit in an eight point lunch. And then just go lower at supper. Because it's easy to spend eight points on supper. But, you know, I get a lot of points. So, I can do it now. A half a cup of our gravy. Just right over the top. Listen, would y'all count that? Let me know. It started to get a skin, skin on the top. So, as it sets up in the fridge, it's probably going to have one. But, you know what? Such is life. Gravy skin. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> they was over there shaking his head. Do you want to rest this gravy on a piece of toast? Uh, most gentle. You hear that? I told you. On a shoe.
Honey, would you eat gravy on a shoe? I sure would. <laughs> Dirty, nasty shoe? Uh, anyway, I can eat it. See, I told y'all, y'all think I lie. The man is berserk over gravy. And I'm going to just divide up my squash and broccoli. Kind of let it go a little bit. My squash is a little bit done, but I don't like it crunchy. So... And we know these are zero points, so we can really put them in there. And I'm having to use these bigger containers because my little food prep, lunch prep ones, breakfast prep ones, whatever. I didn't think I was going to get all this big vegetables in here. Listen, I don't care who you are. I don't think this is, I'm not going to finish those. I don't think this is bad for eight points. For lunch. If you think that right there wouldn't hold you, mm, I think that looks really good. So I'm going to finish putting these together. Looks good for a dinner. <laughs> Back off, bud. <laughs> <laughs> when I get these together, I'm going to kind of clean up and then I'll bring you back and show you everything I've been doing for the past two days. Okay, let's look over what I have been doing for the past two days. My husband walked through here a while ago. He said, Well, you can't say you ain't got nothing to eat this week. <laughs> I'm like, right? So, the last thing I just made were my two lunch plates. Those are nice big lunch plates. Listen, after I eat all that, I sit and want none of this other stuff, but he said he'd like to have that for a supper plate. And he pointed out that's a good um, amount of vegetables, since y'all know I'm not big on those. He said that was a good amount of vegetables to have, so that's, um, that's a good lunch right there. And then there are our nectarine sweet biscuits that I'm calling them. I'd still like to have one warm with a big old slab of real butter on it, but we won't do it. And then my deviled eggs, which I think they're a point. And I, I didn't lighten these up at all. I just pinned down a recipe because normally I just make them by taste. And I have a video. I'll, I'll link everything. But I use Dukes. I did not put no light mayonnaise in my eggs. And they're still only like a point, I think. But I'll link it. They're delicious. I just ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and then here are four of my impossible breakfast mu muffins. The um, recipe that I put up will be tweaked to where it will bake better than this baked. But I had one for breakfast this morning and it was good. With ketchup, of course. So I have one more in another container. Listen, my refrigerator is so full. I love it. And then here's a, that watermelon I had bought. I had a couple, I think about three of the Joseph pitas that needed to be eaten. And so I made these a couple days ago in my air fryer. It was like 3.30 in the morning. I think it was, it was yesterday, about 3.30 in the morning. And I was making my chips in the air fryer. And then this is this week's Pound Droppers Cheesecake. This is the pumpkin. Now, if you can see is not really holding together good. I have not found the sweet spot. Okay, last week's my spring form, spring form was too big, so it was too thin. This week, I used the nine inch pie plate like she said, but see, it's, it's too, too thick to where it didn't bake up to pull out into like one piece. So I think next week, and I'm gonna try Funfetti, I think next, since that's the one everybody likes. Maybe, we'll see. I'm going to try it in my 9 inch square dish. That way I can pull it out instead of long pointy pieces like a pie. I can just cut it into 9 squares. And that might be easier to handle. So that is next week's um, experiment. So this is what I have planned to eat this week. This should cover everything except for suppers and Cause there's breakfast, there's fruit, snacks, there's lunch, dessert. Mm, I think I got it. So if you haven't already subscribed, you know I would love to have you do so. So I'll talk to you later.